Here we go. Every single person in this room and every person who watches my YouTube channel has saved my life. 12 months ago, I weighed 453 pounds and hadn't left the house in 10 years. I hate that picture. That picture was taken just one year ago, August 10th, 2017. No surgery, no pills, just a whole lot of resolve and a little bit of baby Jesus. I hope that properly uh, establishes how intense this speech might get. Let's talk about how we got here. I am the only child of two-time refugees. First, my family fled Armenia as the Turkish government exterminated 1.5 million of us in the Armenian genocide of 1915. We settled in Beirut, Lebanon, where I was born in the middle of a civil war. My parents decided enough was enough when someone had siphoned the gas from our car and they found themselves trapped on a bridge with a one-year-old baby and a sniper shooting at them from a building across the way. They flagged down a passerby who offered to sell them a gallon of gas for $200. But it turned out not to be gas at all. It was enough to get the car across the bridge before destroying it. Their decision to flee was cemented shortly after when a small rocket hit our apartment, turning it into rubble. With nothing left, my family once again fled from evil this time landing in LA. My uncle helped raise me for the first five years of my life while my father remained trapped in Beirut. And he went on to become an LAPD veteran for nearly 30 years now, less than a year from retirement. Very proud of my uncle. After my father arrived, my grandparents helped raise me as my parents each worked 80 hour weeks to put me through private school. A school which for better or worse would set me on the path I'm on today. I was awkward, overweight, and poor in a school where most of the kids were anything but. I was beat up and made fun of mercilessly. By the time I was 16, I was smoking a pack of cigarettes a day and was over 250 pounds. At 18, I cracked the 300 mark. And at age 23, I had already surpassed 500 pounds, uh, 515 to be exact. <sighs> For several years, I kept my head down and threw myself into my marketing career. But you can only run away from yourself for so long. When I was 27, I self-destructed in pretty spectacular fashion. I had a couple of really toxic relationships, one which led to a drug problem, and another that produced a son who I never got to meet. And in the meanwhile, I torpedoed my career that I was working really hard at. My father was really strict growing up, and we had a very strained relationship until that point, so I had no idea what was going to happen when I picked up the phone that day. Dad, I need to come home. I have a drug problem. But I'm covered in tattoos and earrings. I don't know if that's going to be OK. My father interrupted me before I could finish. He didn't need to think about it. Son, come home, he said, without the slightest hesitation. I wish I could tell you I got home, cleaned up, and immediately turned my life around. But that would be a lie. I was 29 years old when I found myself sitting in a motel room off Santa Monica and Western, about to OD. By the time I realized that I'd been sold something very different than what I wanted, it was already too late. I could barely see her stand. I called my parents yet again, except this time it was to say goodbye. I quickly told them I loved them and hung up the phone. Seconds later, I OD'd and lost consciousness. I didn't wake up for 18 hours, but when I finally came to, my desire to ever use again was gone overnight. One minute, I was all the way in North Carolina with a busy career, and in two years' time, I managed to destroy all of it, spend all my savings, develop and conquer a drug problem, only to find myself living back at home with my parents exactly when doctors gave my dad six months to live. That's not coincidence. That's life literally picking you up and putting you where you need to be, no matter how hard the road. My dad scoffed at those six months. I told you he was stubborn. 
He lived another two years while I got to take care of him, carry him, wash him, share moments with a father that no son should have to, and moments I wouldn't trade for the world. On his deathbed, a week before he passed, he took my hand and said, Son, promise me that you'll take your mom to Vegas and buy her a house and watch over her. We're not going to be able to retire there, as I promised. I did as my father asked and soon found myself with a YouTube channel with you guys. I told you earlier that I don't believe in coincidence, and me ending up in Vegas, making a connection with all of you, was no coincidence either. You didn't just save my life starting last year, you've been doing it for the past five. My wife and I adore your videos. We watch them together every day after work. Your laugh is exactly like my brother's who passed away. Watching your videos brightens up my day and reminds me of him. I'm on a fixed income and can't afford to go to the casino like I used to. And your videos make me feel like I'm right there with you. First it came from a thousand of you, then five, then ten, and before I knew it, I wasn't just making slot videos, I was making lifelong friends. At a time when I deserved you least, as I hid away from the world, you guys were my literal lifeline. For years, I survived on your kindness and love, but barely grew as a person. I left the house to make a couple bucks, to record a couple videos, and that was ain't going on any dates. I was deathly f terrified of the world around me. And then came this guy. Not quite, but pretty close, right? <laughs> a new channel showed up in our niche who was young, thin, good looking. But most of all, he was the one thing that I thought I could never could be, sociable. He completely changed the game, the same way I had done five years ago, by yapping through an entire bonus. He was out and about every day meeting with you guys, taking pictures, giving you that personal interaction I never could. What people mistook for jealousy was actually resentment. Resentment over the sudden pressure I was feeling in the comments of my videos. Why don't you ever meet your viewers? I've been watching you for five years. How come we've never seen you? I love your videos so much. I just wish we could get to know you better. What was I going to tell them? I was 450 pounds and I could barely walk out my front door. So I came up with a plan. I'd announce this grand event a year away and that would give me the time I needed. I had no idea how I was actually going to do it, but at least I had a year to think about it. But life, like it brought me back to LA when my dad needed me, knew exactly what I needed. Two weeks after I announced SlotCon, at a normal follow-up with my doctor, he told me that my diabetes was out of control and that I needed to start taking insulin. I said, thanks, but no thanks, doc. I'm barely 39. I'm not going to be tied to a refrigerator the rest of my life. He insisted, and I refused again and walked out. I canceled my next appointment and started my diet the very next day. I was 453 pounds. 10 pounds. 20 pounds. 30 pounds. 50 pounds. 100 pounds. 150 pounds. 234 pounds lost in one year without surgery, without pills, without anything but my desire to make SlotCon real for you guys. Oops, I skipped ahead. Except I was just focusing on the weight loss. With every rejection I got from a casino saying they weren't interested in hosting SlotCon, I retreated further and further back into my shell. We were approaching May with only three months to go when life came knocking yet again. Or should I say, along came a bully. Some old rich guy showed up and offered a bounty in one of his videos if someone could get a picture of me. And in no time, he had one and was giving it a platform on his Facebook. I wish I could tell you I made my Leave Britney Alone video, took his power away, and that was the end of it. But he spent the last three months making video after video, obsessing over me, holding up an empty folder, claiming that I'm a criminal, and implying that it's for heinous acts. He made one just last night. To say I'm being terrorized by this man would be an understatement. I don't know what else you call someone implying you're a pedophile. That's not some silly YouTube feud. That's a gross old man trying to ruin your life. But Nietzsche said, 
He who fights with monsters should look to it that he himself does not become a monster. So other than to tell all of you that I don't have so much as a parking ticket on my record, I only have one thing left to say to this man. Thank you. Believe me when I tell you that life never gives you more than you can handle. I don't know what would have happened if I met him more than a year ago, but I didn't meet him a year ago. I met him at my healthiest weight, at my healthiest mindset, and when life knew I was ready. One night in June, I was sitting on my couch having a full-blown panic attack. I don't know if you've ever had a panic attack, but you can't breathe, your heart's racing, your blood pressure's through the roof, you literally feel like you're dying. And as I was, as I was sitting there at one in the morning, in the middle of this panic attack, wondering how I was gonna deal with this crazy old man who had no fear of law or consequence. One of our famous summer monsoons rolled into Vegas. And my dog Gigi, who you saw earlier, she's more anxious than I am, jumped into my lap in a tizzy. Had to put my panic attack aside to comfort my dog. It's okay, sweetheart, it's just a storm. See, it's outside the house, not inside. Nothing's bothering you in here. I heard myself saying those words to my dog and instantly realized that I needed to be saying them to myself. Because if I didn't have to worry about the devil himself stalking me, then I didn't have to worry about anyone. If the biggest bully I'd ever faced was insignificant despite all his money, that meant every bully was insignificant. And in an instant, my anxiety was gone. Except nobody told my panic attack. I sat there thinking I was gonna die without a care in the world. Went something like this. Uh, you're gonna die. Okay. No, seriously, bro. You're gonna die. You're having a heart attack. Okay. You really should be freaking out right now. Okay. You're ugly and nobody likes you. <laughs> okay. Being able to look inward with such clarity of mind was one of the most cleansing and cathartic moments of my life. It gave me the one last piece of the puzzle I was missing, the strength to walk out my front door. So that, my friends, can't believe I'm gonna do this. And that, my friends, is how you shed not only this skin, but this one as well. Some of us need to overdose and die or eat our way to a heart attack in order to impact the lives of the people around us. Some of us are lucky enough to only have to sit in suffering for 40 years before we find purpose in helping others. As I said in the beginning of this incredibly long speech, every person in this room and every person who watches my YouTube channel quite literally saved my life. The least I can do is spend the rest of it trying to return the favor. I'm gonna release a bunch of books next year. The first one is a fun look at my existential crisis. Then a more serious book about anxiety and then the final book next year will be on my weight loss journey, once I've lost this last 30 pounds and had my skin surgery. I hope you get a couple. Every little bit's gonna help with that surgery. And in the meanwhile, if you or somebody you know is having trouble kicking a habit, is overeating for comfort, or can't get out of bed in the morning, you've got a friend in me. Drop me a line and say hi. Welcome to the first slot con. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.